So now looking at our heart valves and looking at the internal flow of blood within the heart, what we see again are our four chambers, our right atria, left atria, right ventricle, and our left ventricle. And what is separating the atria and the ventricle are what are called our atrioventricular valves. Now, again, the, the key words is in the name there, atrio, atrium, and ventricular ventricle. So these are valves that are located between the atria and the ventricle. And again, this is where our try before your buy rule comes into effect. So the tricuspid is on the right-hand side and the bicuspid or mitral valve is on the left-hand side. Now, attached to these valves are papillary muscles and papillary muscles are connected via the chordae tendinae. Now, what these essentially do is that they help hold them in place, especially during ventricular contraction. So what is happening here in terms of the flow of blood, which we're going to go through in a moment, is that the blood is going to want to go from our right atria through our tricuspid valve into our ventricle. Then the ventricle is going to constrict and it's going to squeeze and want to push the blood up and out this way in order to go to the lungs. Now, as I said in our previous video, is that this is a one way road. We do not want the blood to go back this way. That's bad, super bad. We do not want that to happen. So what will happen is that when these ventricles contract, the blood will want to move this way because it's, uh, it wants to go down its pressure gradient. But the papillary muscles are going to move and constrict up as well as the ventricles at the same time. And what's gonna happen is that these cords here are going to push and cause those valves to snap closed. And that is a part of the heart sounds that we hear. To recap, these papillary muscles and these chordae tendinae, their primary purpose here is to ensure that our atrioventricular valves, our tricuspid and our mitral valves, in other words, will snap closed when our ventricles are constricting. It's incredibly important. Now, these are not the only two valves that we have. We actually have four main valves inside of the heart. Now, we've already discussed two of them. We've discussed the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve, but there are another two set of valves here, and these are called the semilunar valves. Now, this one here is the pulmonary semilunar valve, and this one here is the aortic semilunar valve. Now, just to, to recap here what I was explaining before, how the blood will go from our right atria down into our right ventricle, then the ventricles are going to constrict and it's going to want to push blood up and out. So what's going to happen is that our tricuspid valve is going to snap closed. But what we have here are our pulmonary semilunar valves. And what that is going to do is that as the blood is being pushed up by the ventricles, those pulmonary semilunar valves are going to push open. And this is the first step in our pulmonary circuit in which we are trying to transport our deoxygenated blood to the lungs to get oxygenated. So the pulmonary semilunar valve, which is again here, is located near the right ventricle. And our aortic semilunar valve is located near the left ventricle. And again, the aortic valve is leading to the aorta, the biggest artery in the body. When our atria is constricting to push blood from the top part here down into our right ventricle, we can see it's going to push this uh, tricuspid valve open. When the ventricle constricts, we can see instead of it being nice and open, they're going to snap closed because these valves are made up of cusps. Now, what do I mean by a cusp? It basically is like a, a U shape. And what is gonna happen is as the blood moves up, it's going to basically push against these like cusps here and help push them and snap them closed. And we see the same thing with our semilunar valve. So with our pulmonary semilunar valve, as we're pushing the blood up this way, up here, what's gonna happen is it's, e it's like a one-way door. It's going to open those valves but then once the ventricle stops constricting, what's gonna happen is the blood's going to want to fall back down, just purely by gravity, uh, plus the pressure gradient, but we won't get too much into that. So as the blood wants to fall back down, 
what's going to happen is, is that the blood is essentially going to be caught in these little cusps here, like as we see here, and cause them to snap shut. And it stops that blood from moving back into the heart. Then during the heart's next const uh, constriction, when it beats again, it's going to push more blood up. It's going to cause those valves to open up and more blood to flow through.